second. Twenty seconds. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? Ten. <clears throat> We're back, folks. Freedom Forum. On this, the third day of the tenth month, year of our Lord Jesus the Christ, 2012. Heavenly Father, give us the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to do your will in all things. In these strange and interesting times, we ask that you allow us to work overtime in your name. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, folks, we're back with another one. Another two hours where we need five, six, seven hours. I told my wife tonight I'd be home about five o'clock in the morning, and she said, you don't have that kind of time. Oh, well, I guess I'm just going to have to take up two hours. Stephanie Skinner is back, our Acadiana Bureau Chief. We'll uh, let her tell you the latest in a second. Well, not the latest, but some of the juiciest. <laughs> First... A phrase that she has coined, you can lead a sheeple to slaughter, but you can't make him run away. Boy, is that ever obvious when you look at some of these people that are uh, supporting certain individuals in this uh, election season. Next meeting, tomorrow night, um, will be a big meeting. Spiritual and psychological preparation for the end of the world as we know it, among other things and continuing on after that until we can't do any more. We're going to be continuing to get folks ready for what's coming. And there's a whole lot of people very concerned about that. All right. Uh, first, let's turn things over to Stephanie and let her let you know what's uh, on her mind tonight. Yes, sir. I'm going to speak my heart, Katie um, world, well, we have serious trouble. When we have trouble, I've been going to the council meetings, and I have notes, 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 and I ask for papers. Department of Transportation, Lafayette City Parish, all this stuff, and um, I've offered it to Channel 10, Channel 3, and none of the media takes it. And we have serious, serious trouble, Acadiana. What we need to do is we need to collect food and we need to go to Drug Emporium and we need to get some vitamins and things because we have a coal plant here, $88 million and it's very, very serious and it's very dangerous for our health. So we need to protect our babies with vitamins and just get food because America's not the same. There's something very, very, very wrong. Okay, I'm going to show you guys this. This is not America. This is not America. These things spy on people. They spy on people, moms and babies and grandbabies, and they've added more cameras. I'm gonna kinda cover the article really quick because I need to hurry. But this is not America. Anybody who's affiliated with these things, just uh, stand down. We need, we need to stand down and take America back because um, this article is very, very disturbing, and it's, it's very, very disturbing. Okay. We have Lafayette. It was an advocate, and it was written by Mr. Jason Brown. Since it was unveiled in January, the Lafayette Police Department's Armadillo Surveillance Unit has been deployed more than 60 times, 60 times. And uh, the armored truck is equipped with surveillance cameras, not America, which allows officers to leave the truck unmanned, unmanned in front of homes. Uh, I mean, friends, I mean, we can't. And the unit's deployment in January was delayed while the department opted to in install additional, additional more, more. So how many more cameras? Who reviews the footage? How many handcuffs are in there? How many weapons can fit in there? How many people can fit in there? Our media does not tell us what's going on. There's something seriously wrong in this town. There's trouble. I've been to the council meeting, something's wrong. Okay, back to this article. This is a shame. They call our people targets, target area. 
nuisance area. There's something that's hooked up to the battery that continues to drain it, Mouton said. Um, all, all you people in Homeland Security, FEMA, just uh, stand down. I mean, we, we got to take America back. We don't spy. Now, the next thing is the technical support team, well, excuse me, once the problem is corrected, the vehicle will be used on a more frequent basis. How about Acadiana Zoo? How about it? There you don't have a smart meter, and the animals don't have, you know, a, a tank outside. So, I mean, we're, we're moving. We don't have street cameras. Channel 10, Channel 3, it's terrible. The street, street cameras, when I go to your web page, I mean, why are you looking at cars? I mean, we need, it, it's just, it's just, okay, here we go. And the areas chosen so far were locations that had various issues involving criminal activity or quality of life. Quality of life. It's nobody's business how you live. I mean, some people are hoarders. Some people are dirty. Leave them alone. I mean, unless your house is just down to the ground. I have a house right here that they're going to totally wipe out. I mean, we have ish use, friends. So then I'm going to go on with the article. The locations were then prioritized by the department's patrol division commander who received input from the four precincts and the units of the patrol support, Mouton said. The area is targeted for, target, they're calling our people targets. That is insane. Who reviews that footage? I want to know. Somebody needs to talk to us. This is, I, I just pray. I don't know where I am, what's going on. I, I just pray. And uh, so the areas targeted are the 100 to 300 blocks of McKinley Street in an area known as the Strip. Leave the kids alone. Let them play, let them have a great time. And then East Gilman Road, where Habitat for Humanities has several homes under construction. Walker Road and North Loop Street, 200 Van Buren Drive in Victory Village, formerly known as Country Acres, 100 block East Pine Street. An official with Habitat for Humanities was at a conference out of town and unable to be reached Friday. A call to Victory Village was not returned Friday. I've worked on the north side. They're wonderful, wonderful people. I'm not scared there. And I've done one interview so far, and I plan on doing many more. But my head, I'm just praying. My Facebook page, guys, um, our editor's going to put it up, and now he's going to play a clip of me at the council. Media. I mean, come on, media. We have issues. Let's talk. Okay, would you play it, please, editor? City Par Parish President, Mr. Joey Durrell, any comments before we get started, sir? Um, just y'all can, y'all would like to just approve my budget as given to you again. It's, uh, it's not, not too late. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I had filled out a blue card. I don't know if this is the right place or not. Mr. laughs at him. If you want to speak to just this item and yes. not, okay, please okay. identify yourself with the record. Okay, my name is Ray Green, and I live in District 6, and I'm representing the Citizens Committee to Cut Spending. Gentlemen, I'm a little confused, and from listening to the conversations, I don't seem to be the only one that's confused. I don't know what kind of price we're talking about. I don't know we're talking about 500000 600000 650 or whatever you need or whatever. In view of looking at some of the headlines in the paper, LCG faces $5 million shortfall. That's interesting. And then we have other little headlines. <laughs> LCG will spend as much as $6 million to buy the horse form. That's interesting. Issuing six million in certificates of indebtedness to make the purchase and then the city council is considering an increased subsidy to the cajun dome and they want to make it another fifty thousand dollars and then we find out that the university of louisiana actually owns the cajun dome that's interesting more confusion let's face it people Adding $500,000 or increasing $50,000 to the X amount of dollars, let's just call it X amount because nobody seems to know what it is. It doesn't make much sense to me. Then I see where Mr. Durrell had an article in the paper where it says he needs to revamp the LCG situation. Well, I think so. I, I agree. I think it's about time. Picture this, gentlemen. Let's picture a gigantic hole, something like where they 
call it where the ground starts sinking in, a sinkhole. Right, let's picture one of these. We've got a man standing there pitching $1,000 bills into it. And he's got a big stack of them. Whether it's 500,000 of them or 600,000 or 650, and he gets down to the end after spending all this money in that sinkhole, and then he turns around and says, by the way, you got another 50,000? Well, somebody explain to me how that makes common sense. I mean, I admit that I'm not too smart, but that doesn't make much sense to me. For the past 25 or 26 years, we've been donating 650000 or $600,000. That's over $13 million. That's a lot of money. You can do a lot of grass cutting. You can fix a lot of ditches. You can fix a lot of things that need to be fixed for $13 million, especially since we don't even own it. My big question is, where does the owner come in? Where does the university come in? They own it. If you or I needed money and we didn't have it, what would we do? Wouldn't we have to sell something that we own? Why doesn't the UL do the same thing to raise the money? Why are they so different? Why are they so special? We've got a lot of things around here that need fixing with money. Mr. Boudreaux, you said, hey, if they need some more money, come on back. We'll try to accommodate it. Well, that's real nice. But again, where are you getting the money? Would somebody mind telling me that? Where are you going to get the additional $50,000? Hello? Gentlemen, at the opening of each meeting, you invite the public to come down and get involved and to participate. How can I participate if I don't get any communication? Communication is a two-way street. Now, somebody communicate with me. Where are you getting the additional $50,000? Tell me. Nobody answers. Well, I'm trying to get involved, but I'm not getting any help, not getting any communication. Does this mean that you're being hypocritical? You ask for somebody to get involved. You ask for participation. Communicate with me, somebody. We've got nine bodies sitting up there and two over here. Somebody communicate with me. Green. Where are Mr. you getting Green. the $50,000? Yes, sir. Please lower your voice, Councilman okay. Terrio. Where are you getting the $50,000? Mr. Green. Mr. Green. Please lower your voice. Right Councilman Terrio right is here. trying to answer. I can't get them in with you screaming. Okay. Mr. Councilman Terrio. If you can back me up, I think the additional 50 would be coming out of the general fund, the city general fund, in order to fund them the additional 50000 above and beyond the 500 they already get. Yes, sir. Okay. When I was in psychology class many years ago, the professor said if you keep repeating something over and over and over and over and over for 25 years, that's a sign of insanity. Gentlemen, I don't mean to be rude, but this sounds to me like it's a little bit of financial, shall we say, insanity? Doesn't make any sense. And I would appreciate if somebody would give me some more answers. No offense intended, gentlemen, but it seems like that it's a little bit of financial insanity. I'm all for the Cajun Dome, but I'm also for somebody who owns the darn thing to pay for it. Am I unreasonable? Thank you very much. Um, I just have one question. Please, please identify yourself for the record, ma'am. Stephanie Skinner. Thank you. When Mr. Green talked, how come you laughed at him, Mr. Durrell? It's not funny. Uh, okay, well, the tape will show that. But we, we get upset in our hearts, and people get sad, and it's not funny. Enough. I, so I have an, a few questions on just everything. That's okay if I take my five minutes real quick and just... Yes, ma'am. Okay, on page 30, I want to ask about the federal money. Uh, last year, there was 18.9 million was given to us from the federal government, and this year, only 73,000 has been received. And so, there's 22 federal grants that have not come through yet. And I want to know why and when they come through, if anybody knows. Ma'am, I don't. Think, I, I know I cannot answer that question for you right okay. now. Um, That's fine. What, what I could do is if you can get with our clerk, okay. and um, I'd be more than happy to do that research. Sure. But I definitely do yes, not sir. have the answer to that. Okay, that's perfect. Um, um, also, yes, 
Yeah, and there's only one state grant listed too, but I'll get in touch with the, the office on that. Investments. If we're in debt and we're broke, and, we're, and like Mr. Green said with his articles on the situation that consolidated government's in, well, the, there's 3.3 million revenue in investment earnings. And so I wanted to know what you invest in and where does the money come to invest if we're in a crunch and what are the investments used for? And that's on page 35 and 36. I know by, by our charter and our law that we have to balance our budget. So we might not have as much money as we have in the past. I know that Ms. Toopson, we have to have a balanced budget. Is that correct? By our charter, the investments, once again, I don't know if Ms. Toop, do you have any answers about the investments, but I can get you those information on how we make money in our investments. Or maybe Mr. Durrell, do you have an idea? Well, sir. You collect property taxes at the beginning of the year. We don't spend 100% of our budget the day we collect the money. It sits in the bank and we try to maximize earnings. Um, we have some funds that do have money and they earn revenue and we have some funds that are very strapped for money because our funds and our tax, our tax structure is dedicated. Money that is dedicated for mosquito control and health unit, they have money and it earns interest but I can't take that money and use it in the city or the parish general fund whose budget is tighter. So you have a, di a various array arrays in which you can earn interest. Um, we invest only in what we are allowed to invest in by state law and nothing else. It's a very conservative investment portfolio. Yes, ma'am. Is there a way, I'm going to move on, but is there a way I can attain a list of those investments? You can. Or is you can, that not privy to the public? Everything we do is privy to the public and it is posted on the internet and you can look it up in the audited financial statements and you will see the investments identified in the financial statements every year as long as LCG has been LCG. Yes, ma'am. once again, if you want to get with the clerk or the administration with a list. I'm so just, we can answer. I'm, I'm just learning everything. It's it's hard. Okay, well, now I'm I wish I had one. more answers. Some of the questions I will have the answer to, and some of them I will I not. That are more technical. And that, that's totally fair. Okay. My next one, I'm running out of time, is the police department and their personal salaries. Um, this is on page 129. Um, on page 129, there was 755,000 on the personal salaries last year, it's up to 13.3 million. Why is that? Is that a typo or their raises or? Would you like me to yes, address this? Please. This was explained during the budget process. Okay. We had all the police, all the salaries broken out into several divisions, which made it administratively cumbersome for the police chief to handle. So now all the salaries are in one division. So it will mirror the way the fire department is handled. Yes, ma'am, because that's a huge, huge, huge The increase. police department is actually decreasing substantially because of all the positions that were cut. Yes, ma'am. Well, how come it went from 70, uh, 755000 up to $13.3 Because it was recorded over many different divisions. Okay. So you don't see it all in one line item. Yes, ma'am. And now we are moved it up to one line item. This is a line item. If you look further on, you will see very many divisions that are showing zero for next year. Okay. Got to look at the next few pages. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And my next one is holiday pay on the police department. Is that the same issue, Ms. Lori? Is that? Um... That's, that's the same okay. issue. Okay. Okay. And um, then the next one I have is group health care and Medicare. Last year it was 91,000, now it's projected to 1.9 million, same, same thing? Same issue, it's all being recorded under one division. Okay, and so does Obamacare, is that gonna raise costs in any sense of the word? Uh, we have an estimated increase in group health. I cannot say that it's related to Obamacare. It is related to the studies that our consultants do, and I believe it was about an 11% increase in the cost. Yes, ma'am. Also, we have to give the federal government $4.4 million on Medicare and SSI. Is that correct? I'm not sure where you got that number from. Okay. 
Because I know group health care is up 20 times, group life insurance up 19 times, retirement Medicare is up 20 times. But okay, well, I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. And, and, and I just want to let you know, I do appreciate you coming and ask questions, and we want that. On some of the technical ones, please submit them. I, we can try our best, Mr. Stanley, and the administration, and Mr. Durrell, and Ms. Dugas, if you have any, um, that we can research and answer ahead of time. Sir. But definitely, no, there is no dumb question, so keep asking. Thanks. Yeah, and then that way Acadiana can learn, you know, because as I learn, they can learn, and it's important to all of us. And Thank you. I'll learn, too. <clears throat> City Par Parish President, Mr. Joey Durrell, any comments before we get started, sir? Okay. Um, just y'all can, um, can like talk, just approve my talk, budget please. as give um, it to me. What camera, Hartwell? This one? Okay. Um, the Daily Advertiser didn't have our budget on the front page. Um, I, I don't know what's going on, media. I'll offer you my notes. Uh, we're being enslaved. Uh, there's cameras everywhere, wheel tanks for our babies. Um, just a step up media. We have all kinds of things we need to stand for our children. We can do this. I mean, the corruption's just run amok. And we, I love my council, and I love going to the meetings, and I love talking to them and they're my friends. But in America, I have this shirt. I had it made and um, it says, these flags are now considered terrorist activity. Pray and whisper, Acadiana. So is this America when you can't hang these flags? What camera, Mr. Broussard? Okay. And can everybody see it? But the third caller that calls in gets a shirt. And um, I mean, we, we're gonna just, we're gonna do this. We're gonna take America back because we have serious trouble. And I, I don't know what's going on in this town, but it's gonna be okay and, and we're just, we're gonna do this. But you need to prepare everyone. You need to hunker down and it's really, really fun. Just like get excited and go get your food and get your vitamins and, and call the police and call everybody and be very, very kind and whisper and say, Please, no tanks, please. You know, I don't want to move to the Katie Zoo so I can be free. It, we're, we're in trouble. Hello. This is Richard. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. Y'all doing a good job tonight. Yes. There you go. Turn your, turn your TV I wanna, down. I'm getting all the way down here. I want yeah. to bring to the public's attention something that has happened. And it's very serious involves the theft of our earned money because that's what it is yes it's terrible Eight, 18 million dollars has man. been sent back to the feds from what was supposed to be vocational rehabilitation money for people who are disabled and that includes veterans to get training education job readiness the whole words there's now 2,821 of my friends who will not have that opportunity unless people show up in Baton Rouge on, I believe, October the 17th. I will have more information coming on that. Okay. But this is going to take a grassroots effort to uh, put some pressure and ask, well, oh, okay, this is $18 million. There's supposed to be some matching funds. That's one tenth Gosh. of one hundredth of the entire eighteen billion state budget. If I'm doing my math right here, now, I'm unable to hear the other side of the conversation, so I'll I will hang up and let you all comment. Okay, thanks, Richard. But when when I'm at the council meeting, the numbers fifty million, da 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 da, da million, 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 million. The dollar's trash. It's going to crash. We're in trouble. You need health food, uh, health food really fast. You need money really fast. You need to tell poor people, hey, man, you're being ripped off. You're being fleeced. And we need to hunker down. That's the bottom line. And we need to take America back. And we can do this. And we're going to do this because it's time. It's time because this, this is in our country. And we love children. And it's time to stand for our children. I mean, come on, guys. Look at that. There's a whole lot of stuff that's terrorist activity now. Gosh, you know. The citizen's the, rule book that we gosh. have available has been considered uh, terrorism by some uh, state persecuting attorneys in the, in the recent past. So it's, it's, uh, I mean, it's media, all over the country. Media, what are you there for? I mean, why do you even go? Why do you go tape? Why? Because 
Uh, I mean, uh, I love you, media, and I love um, the, the reporter there. I want to go have coffee with her, Channel 10. And if I had money, I'd hire her, and she'd be working with me. Because it's time for the truth. I mean, it's time, and she has a sparkle in her eye, Miss Renee Allen. And uh, she's beautiful, and, and we're friends, and I, I like her as a person. I'm going to go have coffee with her. But this is not acceptable. We need to turn off the media that does this and serves up our children to this, this kind of stuff. Because we have serious issues in this town. You know, it's, and I've been praying, and I'm crying, and I love my council, and that's all I have to say. Now, next hour, I'm going to come back, and we're going to show me at a council meeting. And I'm so happy that I can get this information to you. I'm so, so maybe blessed. We will. Huh? Maybe. Well, no. We'll we, see. Okay. Well, no, I want to show that tank. Pretty please with sugar. Have you already showed it? No, not no. That we have the video. Oh, you have the video. Okay, so bye, Katie Anna. I'm gonna turn it over, to Mr. Parker, and God bless you. I'll be back next hour, and we'll try that tape. Okay, but but pray and and call and whisper and say no more tanks for our people. No more wheel tanks. And armored nuisance areas, target problem, quality of life. The, this is America. I mean, okay, folks. Bye. I'll be back. Okay. While uh, Stephanie's getting off, there's. Like she says, there's plenty to do, folks. There's plenty out there that needs doing. Yes, and get, get busy, hunker nobody's, down. Nobody's uh, nobody's working. Nobody's doing anything. Oh, but we're we're working to get somebody, certain individual, <laughs> elected president. We're uh, enslaved. They're enslaving me? us. They're enslaving us. Excuse me. God, the zero guy animals. That, the guy that many of you are supporting for president is no better than the one that's in there now. In fact, he'll be worse. So, uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. Uh. All right, that was a, that was effortless. We got two more callers. The the second caller now gets the shirt, and we'll make sure you get it either at the meeting tomorrow night or Stephanie will get it to you, one way or the other. We've got a breaking news. As the new $300 LeBron James sneakers go on sale, the media are preparing for possible shoe-related violence with calls for stricter, stricter sneaker control legislation, that courtesy Mallard Fillmore. We'll have some more breaking news from Mallard shortly. But on a more serious note, uh, concerning the, the UN Small Arms Treaty, this comment was made. Oh. Go ahead, call her, you on the air. Hey, Tom. Yes, sir. This is Len. Hey, guy. How you doing? Oh, we're hanging on. I hear you. We're trying to hang on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. I know the but feeling. Oh, anyway, by the way, can you... If, we're, uh, we're watching, seeing what's going on. Yeah. And uh, we're... Uh, Thank you for everything you've done. Well, thank and you. Everything you're going to do. And thanks for all your help. Y'all well, recall Lynn sat in for me two shows back two weeks ago while I was gone. Well, we tried. Uh, we tried to do what we could, you know. And I get fired up at times when, uh, especially when it comes to people calling. Uh, this a democracy. We're not a democracy. We're right, a republic. Right. And boy, are you going to hear some some whining and complaining if one guy or the other, uh, November sixth, wins because of the electoral college, but does not win the majority of the popular vote? In fact, uh, now that I mention it, I think that's what's going to happen, and it's going to be well, could very well be Romney winning the electoral college. And boy, will there be a stink raised then. And of course, well, the, the Electoral College is the last vestige of our republic. Uh, the rest of the democracy does not work, folks. This is an obvious, what you're seeing today, what Lynn and I are so incensed about, and, and Stephanie, and all of the folks that are really trying to do something. I mean, trying to do something real. Okay, not just giving lip service by oh well we got a we got a campaign for this guy or that guy and then do nothing about who counts the votes because it doesn't matter how you vote, in the words of Joe Stalin, it matters not who votes, it matters who counts the votes. Okay. Well, the the problem we have is, you know, especially with Ron Paul, they don't they don't. 
blackmailed Ron, Ron Paul in, into submission. Well, I wouldn't say blackmail. Blackmail implies guilt. He was guilty of something, and so they were going to bring it out. What they did was they extorted him through extortion yeah. and threats and the way that they treated his people. I mean, we told you what happened in Shreveport, and I'm still upset by that, and I will never have anything to do with the state Republican Party again until they change their ways, until they prove to me that they are not a bunch of fascists. Okay? Well, the, the thing about Ron Paul, you know, it, and they, they made him, you know, like he, he was a, you know, puppet. They only gave him 17, uh, 17 votes. Yeah. And then uh, they gave the rest to Romney. Yeah. What, what was going on there? Well, again, you know? it, it, was, it was a scam. It was vote scam at the highest levels. Well, the, at, at, yeah, the highest levels. And that right there should have told people. There should have been demonstrations in the streets. There should have been people going to Baton Rouge. Uh, So-called registered Republicans should have been going to Baton Rouge by the tens of thousands. But they were so relieved because Ron Paul was no longer in the race to, to water down Romney's support or crap like that. Excuse me, people. You're going to deserve what you're fixing to get. Mm -hmm. Yep. That, that's the reason why I got fired up uh, a couple weeks back when I did your show. I mean, I got... I really got fired up. I don't even remember what what I told everybody, <laughs> but the spirit was speaking at the time. Yeah, yeah, it happens yeah. a lot on this show. Well, the 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 thing that has to that that has to happen is a major turnaround, uh, and if it doesn't happen peacefully, people, it's going to happen the other way. And right now, it looks like the powers that be are manipulating things to where the chaos that is coming will be controlled by them. Because if they let it get out of hand and they let it go spontaneous, they won't be able to control it. The heading on the 33rd degree Mason certificate is in Latin, ordo op chao, order out of chaos. And that's what they are breeding in this country right now. That's why I think possibly one scenario for if there is an election November 6th, and that ain't, that ain't a done deal yet, if there is an election November 6th, they very well could go ahead and manipulate it to where Romney wins the Electoral College but not the popular vote. And then, watch out. There's well, already people uh, gearing up. The whole problem is with George Soros. But it's That's not, no. the scum of the earth. It, it, by the way, Soros is selling as fast as he can apparently without crashing any markets because then he loses money but he's selling stock in these financial institutions and buying tons of gold does that tell well, you anything? He's uh, one of the main roots with the, the Rockefellers and Rothschilds well, all, the, and, yeah. you know so on but well I just wanted to call and, and, uh, and give my call Comment. Well, I appreciate uh, Tom, it. I'll see you tomorrow night. All righty. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> All right, Tom. You take care. All right. Oh. Two. Number dos. One more. Next caller gets the shirt. Anyway, um, there's something interesting has occurred that was brought out at the beginning of the week with a lot of additional, um, if you want, hoop de doo about it, but let's just watch what happens. Go to whitehouse.gov on the internet and go to schedule, president's schedule, and notice something very peculiar about that. You will see today's schedule, and maybe they posted tomorrow's schedule by now, but it was not posted as of late this afternoon. Only today's schedule, yet they have the calendar going into next year. You can, you can follow the calendar month by month, and there's nothing there after today, this afternoon. Now, what started this was some people noticed that, that back in the beginning of the week, there was nothing for the days after the day they were looking at it on the White House schedule. And suddenly it appears in the morning. Well, th this is awfully peculiar. Are they doing it for security purposes? Excuse me, but the debate that's going on right now 
was not even listed on there. And everybody knew it was happening. This could not have been for security purposes. This is for arrogance purposes is what they're doing this for. Uh, they want to act like, oh, they're, they're, there's a security threat, so we don't want to let anybody know where he's going to be uh, uh, in advance. Well, that was bull hockey. If that's the excuse that they've got for not posting the schedule on there, because otherwise it was raising some red flags, what with Congress being out of town and a whole lot of other people out of uh, Washington, D.C., and no telling if the Supreme Court was even there anymore because they're not going to officially tell you that they've left town. So uh, it's just an interesting little tidbit that you need to watch. This is the kind of stuff you watch to see if, uh, well, mayhaps something is going to occur. Uh, so again, whitehouse.gov, and you can uh, do all of this. While we're talking about him, Oh, well, let me mention the books first. Uh, you need to watch book notes on C-SPAN on weekends. C-SPAN is, is closer to being fair and balanced than anybody on television, especially book notes, because they'll have good folks and they'll have bad folks books on there. Well, there were three good books that were profiled this weekend. They spoke to the authors. One of them I didn't get any details on. It was just in passing that I noticed I, the, 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 te the topic intrigued me, but it was basically a topic about vote scam and, and how the, the elections are not fair, uh, your vote does not count, etc. The second most interesting was leading, no, excuse me, The Art of Being Free by Wendy McElroy. And they just had her in a, in a casual uh, setting and, and had a brief discussion with her, but the art of being free was what caught my eye. And she said something very succinct. We are in a police state. Okay? We are in a police state. Not that we're headed for a police state, but we're already there. And of course, Stephanie alluded to that with her talking about the, uh, the, this armored uh, vehicle that the city is going to post around troubled neighborhoods and just kind of leave it there to, uh, to watch you have ro basically robots are going to be watching you because the people watching the cameras, who are they? And the, the, the police state is here, folks, and that's, that's a, a, a perfect example of it. The best book that, that I saw reviewed was Leading from Behind by Robert Miniter. And what was compelling about this book is that the sources were all democratic, all democratic hacks, all hacks of the demon rat party, except for a few technical people that he had uh, detailed information on from the uh, security or intelligence or a uh, uh, black ops standpoint because he did an extensive uh, look at the Obama, Osama connection and, and what allegedly happened to Osama bin Laden and what Obama did about it and afterward. Uh, and, and we'll start with that one there. The interesting part of that, let's, let's just uh, uh, for the moment play devil's advocate and say, yeah, everything the government has told us about the demise of, of Osama bin Laden is correct. All right. Uh, Apparently, a whole bunch of intelligence operatives who uh, probably didn't know any differently advised Obama to be quiet about the, uh, the demise of bin Laden because of all this intelligence information they supposedly, uh, they supposedly had garbage bags full of, excuse me, full of uh, papers and, and thumb drives and disks and stuff that they pulled out of that house, supposedly, okay? Well, uh, Bam Bam went public immediately with it, as you remember, and his advisors were telling him not to do that because all of this information then will be useless. Well, most of it will be useless then because all of the people involved will realize, well, he's liable to have had information, and this is a standard, this is SOP, 
for any kind of underground intelligence network is that when the top dog is compromised, then you assume everything is compromised and you head for the hills and go to plan uh, X, Y, and Z. You no longer continue doing business as usual. So cell phones get trashed, uh, et cetera. Well, one can play the devil's advocate on this, like this guy did, like I said, and he said, for political reasons, Obama went public with this so that he came out being, smelling like the hero. He decided that this was going to happen. Actually, he didn't decide right away. Apparently, there was a lot of vacillation and bouncing back and forth, and, and according to the official word that this guy passed on in his book, Leading from Behind. Uh, but from our standpoint, I think what happened was uh, Obama was told by his handlers, because you see, this guy, Robert Miniter, in his book, did not take it one step beyond as far as who's really running the White House, who's really in charge out there. It's not uh, Barack Hussein Obama that's in charge of this country, folks. He's not president except in name only. He is the figurehead, just as the Queen of England is officially the figurehead of, of the British Empire, the British Commonwealth. Excuse me, it's not the empire anymore. Well, <laughs> and, and, and these two things ju juxtapose, juxtapose those two positions. And what you have is Obama is what the Queen of England is supposed to be, and the Queen of England is what Obama is supposed to be. Okay, she is the real head of England, uh, just behind the scenes, okay? The, the, the prime minister, the new prime minister of parliament has to get her approval to be the new prime minister. Oh, but that's, that's, that's pro forma. Well, they know who ahead of time that she's going to approve it because she's approved who gets to do it to start with. Well, over here, we've got somebody pulling Obama's strings. And I think what happened here was it doesn't matter. Go ahead and tell them, because we want this thing to continue. We don't want to end the, the terrorism war. This guy, Minitor, thinks that if Obama had not done what he did, then they could basically have wiped al-Qaeda off the map with the intelligence information that was in those garbage bags they pulled out of Osama bin Laden's uh, palatial estate where they raided, okay? That's what Minitor thinks. Well, or at least officially, that's what he's saying. I know darn well that in doing the research this guy did, he found out there was more to the, the story than he let on. But he couldn't let it on any more than uh, certain people could talk about what they did at certain times in their government careers because otherwise they would be exterminated. So the reason that Obama was told to do that was to do the political stuff to make it appear that he was presidential and making the decision which he didn't make himself. Okay, this was no independent decision by him. He was told what the decision was going to be ahead of time. Now, but Minitor's book did reveal something that I was not aware of and maybe if I'd researched into it, but there again, I don't look much into the Obama situation as far as his, his handlers and all go because for, it doesn't really matter that much. But for those listening that might be Obama supporters, which are probably listening to the, watching the debate instead, so, but I'll throw this out anyway. The only uh, senior advisor to both the president's wife, the so-called first lady, and the president, the well, first time in history it's ever been the same individual, and that's that, that Valerie Jarrett individual. This Valerie Jarrett has got more influence than even, uh, I think, uh, Glenn Beck realized. Uh, Minitor said that Valerie Jarrett eats a meal with Obama, the president now, two or three times a day. Not a week, a day. So she's the first time, the first chief ad advisor senior advisor that's ever been uh, invited along on uh, presidential family vacations also, okay? 
That's the kind of uh, stroke she's got. So if you want to find out more about this, you can go to this book, Leading from Behind, Robert Miniter. And according to Miniter, and again, this is Democratic sources, folks. These are, these are people belonging to the Demon Rat Party, capital D, Demon Rat Party. There's a lot of discontent amongst those people. And it's because he's claiming it's because of Obama's leadership style, which is what the, the book focused on. For example, he'd have a high-level meeting with cabinet members and then suddenly just up and walk out. He would tell one of them that, okay, you're in charge now, or, or I'm done for now, and, and walk out. And the meeting's still going on. It's right in the middle of the meeting. And of course, as we mentioned before, he has failed to attend 35% of the daily uh, briefings that the president gets in the morning. 35%. That's more than a third, folks. And on the road, oh, but he's gone. He's on the road. Mm -mm. On the road, they give him the briefings there. Like the, the schedule I was telling you about earlier, it shows on there that the briefings, the daily briefings proceed in the morning, in, the, in his case, 9 o'clock in the morning in Las Vegas time because that's where they were the, the rest of the previous two days of this week. And now they're in Denver. But he started the day in Las Vegas and had his briefing in Las Vegas. So he gets the briefing on the road. This dog and pony show continues the whole time, wherever he is. Uh, what's interesting in that schedule is even in the back schedule, the, the previous uh, schedules are still there up to a certain several months worth, I think. And all weekends, there's nothing going on. Saturday or Sunday, he does nothing on Saturdays and Sundays. Not even the daily briefing is listed on Saturdays and Sundays. So if you want to attack this country right now, I guess that would be the time to do it, would be a Saturday or Sunday morning, right? Because the El Presidente is out of uh, pocket. Okay, Leading from Behind by Robert Miniter. And I want to read the book uh, because it's so interesting as far as leadership, etc., goes. Uh, and, and it just so boggling the mind, if you weren't already aware of, of uh, uh, Obama's lack of ability. And of course what he did when the UN was in session two weeks ago was unforgivable. Remember, he shows up on The View with those five witches and he has his witch on there too. She could have, if, if, oh, oh, the excuse was, well, the, the, the people watching The View vote. So, and this is an election year, so he's got to do his politicking. Well, instead of uh, talking to world leaders, and he's supposed to be the leader of the free world, uh, poor choice of words there. He's supposed to be the most powerful man on earth, uh, First time in 20 years that a president had not had sit-down meetings with other world leaders at the UN opening, regardless of what you feel about the UN. He could have sent his wife. She could have done just as well talking about his favorite dessert, et cetera, and whatever claptrap they, they talked about. Now, he's president. Again, Romney does the same stuff. He's doing the same lame, inane BS stuff. Okay, but he's not president. The only job he's got right now is to try and become president officially. Well, he's not doing a very good job of it, so we'll see. We'll see who they decide that you voted for come November 6th, if November 6th happens, because there are still things uh, bubbling below the surface. There's a couple of reports just today. Uh, one of them is that a rather large number of U.S. Air Force aircraft and U.S. Navy and Marine Corps aircraft have headed east out over the Atlantic Ocean. Large numbers of all kinds of aircraft have headed east. Where are they going? Additionally, there's a report that 25, 25, count them, separate Domestic violence exercises have begun inside the U.S. today. We'll see. We hear any more. If anybody hears anything about that, holler. 
Uh, but that's the report we're getting. While we're talking about Mr. Bam Bam, and I'm not going to send this stuff out. If anybody wants this, let me know, and I'll email it to you. But here's, here's four simple questions that have been put out about Bam Bam's birth certificate that are quite telling. And these are all backed up by information off the Internet to actual websites and such to confirm some very simple facts. Back in 1961, when he was born, and even that may be doubtful, that he was born in 1961, people of color were called Negroes or colored. So how can the Obama birth certificate state he's African American? The term wasn't even used at the time. Birth certificate, the White House released, lists his birth as August 4, 61, and Barack Hussein Obama is his father. No big deal. The time of Obama's birth, it shows that his father's age is 25 years old and states that he was born in Kenya, East Africa, the father, that is. This wouldn't seem anything of concern, except that Kenya did not even exist until 1963, two whole years after Obama's birth and 27 years after his father's birth. How could Obama's father have been born in a country that did not exist? Up until Kenya was formed in 1963, it was known as the British East Africa Protectorate. And that's on Wikipedia, which is a left-wing outfit controlled by the government. So, hey, the facts are out there, folks. The facts are out there to refute the birth certificate that was released. On it, uh, it lists his place of birth as Capiloni, Capilani Maternity and Gynecological Hospital. And that cannot be because said hospital did not exist in 1961 as such. It was Kaui Keolani Children's Hospital and Kapololoni Maternity Home, respectively. They merged in 1978, okay? So how can that name be the one that's on the birth certificate dated uh, 17 years before that hospital even existed by that name? And again, that's on the website for the hospital. Oh, another little faux pas in their... Uh, see, they, they don't, they're so arrogant, they, they, they don't bother because the control media, this, the, the, these weenies that they control, they're not going to check this. They're not going to look at it with a, a, a critical eye. Uh, why hasn't this been discussed? Then a clue comes from Obama's book on his father. He states how proud he is of his father's fighting in World War II. Well, this first I'd heard about this, but by the same token, think about this. His father was allegedly 27 years old when Obama was born in 63, and Obama's claiming his father fought in World War II. Uh, so then his, his date of birth is approximately 1936, and World War II was 1939 to 45, so he was three years old when World War II broke out in 39, and when it ended six years later, he was nine years old. So I guess he was a drummer boy for the, or a, a powder monkey for the Navy, somebody's Navy. And by the way, how many countries in Central Africa, or how many folks fought? There was some fought in the Second World War for the colonial armies, okay? But not nine-year-olds. Uh, Are any of these sinking in on any of you Obama Easters out there? Does any of that sink in? It doesn't sink in fast enough, I'm afraid. Breaking news, how much time we got? Okay. Well, there was a White House uh, hack attack by the Chinese from the AP. It just occurred on the 30th. And uh, we'll get into more on that in the next hour. Um, more breaking news from while we're at it, give you a little uh, respite here. We have three man in the street interview. One of them owns a pawn shop, one of them is a bankruptcy attorney, and the other one is buying gold and paying cash for it. And yes, those three are all claiming they're better off now than they were four years ago. Well, I guess so. Pawn shop owner, a bankruptcy attorney and somebody that's got the cash to buy gold. Yeah, they're better off now than they were four years ago. About the only ones. And the other 
news, and this is a, this was actually on the AP wire, but Mallard happens to pass these along in certain quaint ways. New Jersey mail carrier has been arrested for using her per postal route to deliver cocaine. Police reportedly caught her after drug dealers complained that their cocaine was arriving late and to the wrong address and beat up packages. Hmm. That brings to mind what happened in New Orleans several years ago when some folks, some tourists in New Orleans went to the police on the beat and complained because the cocaine they just bought from a street vendor was, was not real cocaine. It was uh, talcum powder. Hmm. I guess when you snort talcum powder, it doesn't have the same effect as cocaine does. I, don't, I wouldn't know. I, I don't snort either. I don't snort anything. Anyway. Well, folks, that levity being as it were, there's still lots to cover, so we'll be back uh, shortly. And drones, drones and more drones. It, 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 some people claim that there's a drone for every one of us in the, in the country. Well, I don't believe it. So just stay tuned, and we'll, uh, we'll get back with you on that stuff. In the meantime, four minutes, we shall return. Oh, if citizens of the United States should not be free and happy, the fault will be entirely their own, George Washington. <laughs> okay. Five minutes all you've got. What do you mean? Boring. If you want to come back on, it's five minutes only. But the tape. I don't care. It took too long the first time. In the first hour. So you were supposed to run that one. You talked about the you talked about it in the first hour. I know, but it's so cool to see me on the council floor because this could probably end up on a drudge report. You never know. No, no.